All right, we are live. I'm excited to do this today. Hello, my name is Dr. Bridget Williams. This is the Wellness Toolkit. And I am joined today by Sharon Beck of Luminous Life. Welcome, Sharon. I'm excited to see you. It's been a long time. Yes, it has. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Your hair is long and, and we have so much to talk about today. So today on the Wellness Toolkit, um, we will talk about holistic practices as we always do in adding more tools to your toolkit, but we're talking about a tool that's really important in life and that is resilience. And so to do well in life, to be able to make it through the bumps in the road, one of the tools that you have to have is resilience. And Sharon Beck is definitely um, an example of how one can make it through. And particularly related to holistic practices, we're talking to Sharon, talking with Sharon today about making your holistic uh, business survive during the pandemic. So um, to give a better introduction, um, Sharon Beck is the owner of Luminous Life, which is a holistic health center in Cuyahoga Falls. She is a holistic practitioner and a Reiki master. So again, welcome Sharon. So let's really get into it. Um, tell us more about you and tell us about Luminous Life. Well, about me, I do have my bachelor's in holistic health and, you know, I'm certified in like uh, law of attraction, life coaching. I'm a Reiki master, as you mentioned, I do animal Reiki. Uh, I'm always learning, expanding. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know, Loomis Life, I started off as a holistic healing center. Uh, that's still in play, but I also uh, switched gears and added uh, like a metaphysical store. So I, now I ha have more crystals. Uh, I'm trying to uh, open Luminous Life up to different uh, belief systems and modalities. Mm -hmm. And I actually have some psychic mediums working here. Right. And, uh, you know, we have past life regression mm -hmm. and we're starting up all of our classes again this month. Very good. So, yeah, I've seen your growth um, definitely over the years. So for transparency, um, Sharon was opened up her center to us when we were um, newly in business with Green Harvest Health. And I was doing some talks there at times, but doing uh, medical cannabis cards in one of her offices until we opened up an office actually in Cleveland herself. And she was one of our first direct salespeople for our CBD. And so you continue to grow and expand, but um, obviously the pandemic was difficult for everyone. You know, we all had to kind of rethink and and look at our lives differently and look and how do we make our businesses survive as well. So tell us a little bit about when, I know everything really hit me around March 13th. Um, tell us your journey when, when you learned about COVID and the pandemic. Oh my, yeah, it's been a struggle for everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's been challenging. Uh, being a new business, I just broke even for the first time in March last year, mm. and then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. So, you know, of course, we were forced to shut down. So I took a couple weeks. My dad has some property out in the country. So I sat down out in nature and kind of revamped the business. Mm -hmm. and we started uh, all natural disinfectant and uh hand sanitizer line and I revamped the website and we started selling things online mm -hmm. and I'm blessed to have such wonderful customers and clients that one of them started a GoFundMe mm -hmm. to keep Luminous Life going and they raised enough for a month's rent which helped out a lot and you know we created a, an app Mm -hmm. for our business and now you can you know schedule or buy anything online from the app or the website and that's really helped us stay afloat 
and you know unfortunately I had to pull out of some retirement money mm -hmm. to keep going sure but all of the that's a really difficult I mean it was so difficult for everyone whether we were concerned about health or concerned about finances um but you had to kind of collect yourself right mm -hmm. Yep. and and reassess what is how are we going to do this can we get through this and it sounds like very quickly you started reinventing mm -hmm. you know your uh your website and your business where were you getting that energy from uh i do the best when i'm out in nature there you know there's no running water no electricity no cell service so I didn't have all of the interruptions that we have every day. I could actually mm -hmm. sit, talk, meditate. And, you know, I, I wish I could say the ideas were from me, but no, they're from above. I'm sure. not that smart. Um, <laughs> but the fact that you knew, so you knew that that's where you you gained your insight. You knew you gained it from getting away from the madness where many people were glued to their televisions and panicking, you mm -hmm. knew for you to be successful, for you to be able to uh, reinvent and rethink this whole situation, you knew you needed to get away. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then you mentioned prayer as, as one of your um, tools in your toolkit. Oh yeah. Yes. I have to have my prayer. Yeah. Prayer meditation. So that's, so you make a very good point that, you know, when we often talk about the wellness toolkit, we're talking about different holistic practices. We're talking about sometimes medications. Um, a, the reason that we even started doing the show in the first place is to make sure people understood those CBD and cannabis are great options medicinally. Um, no, you cannot do, you cannot be successful and grow and reclaim your wellness with just using one tool. And so I wanted to make sure we were introducing other tools to, to, to patients and, and to people so that they, they knew to not just look in one area, but to look in others. And so we talk about what are the, what are the tools that you, you utilize in your toolkit? You, you mentioned prayer, but um, what other tools do you go to? Well, you know, I did use the CBD a lot because there was a mm -hmm. lot of anxiety and it helps with that. Mm -hmm. um, I also started my making my uh, herbal teas again. Mm -hmm. I, I used to have a little side business with a medicinal herbal teas. So I started that back up and, you know, I was giving everybody the immune booster and the Mm -hmm. de-stress and the nighty night so I relied a lot on that to keep me calm sure it's, it's stress you know that was a very stressful time for everybody absolutely and I consider us I don't say post-covid you know I, I, I or post-pandemic I I honestly say mid midway you know mm -hmm. that we're a year out and things are looking better but I think we still have a long way to go and so um, to be able to go back to those tools to kind of collect you and keep you in the right space is really important. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And to remove yourself from the madness. That, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I agree. Um, and so what did you learn about yourself through this whole process? You were able to reinvent the business, right? Mm -hmm. You were able to see great support from friends, obviously, and um, to be able to kind of get back in, indoors and, and rebuild the business. Um, what did you learn about yourself during that time? Well, it really came to my attention. I still have a lot of bad habits. <laughs> so, so, you know, I quit drinking. I mm -hmm. quit sugar completely. Mm -hmm. I've lost a bunch of weight. Mm -hmm. um, I you know, started stretching every day. You know, I'm just trying to make more time to take care of myself, which I really was not doing. So that's interesting because a lot of people during COVID 
And during the pandemic and being, you know, isolated, instead of digging in and doing what you did, which was what are my bad habits? Maybe this is the time to confront them. They got new bad habits. A lot of people were exercising less and eating more and drinking much, much more. How did you find the, the wherewithal to approach this differently? I actually got a chance to slow down enough to take a look at myself. Yeah. And it's pretty much a decision. You know, it's not easy. I'm not, you know, because I didn't realize how much I relied on alcohol to self-medicate mm -hmm. until I slowed down and I pretty much didn't have a choice but to look at myself. Right. And, you yeah, know, absolutely. So yeah, I upped the CBD, I upped the, you know, because I do have my medical marijuana card, I upped mm -hmm. that for the pain, you know, uh, you know, started taking my vitamins and minerals again, but it's, you know, it's just new habits, replacing old habits with new ones. It takes a little bit of time, it takes some failures, some successes, you know, definitely a lot of self-discipline. So was this a planned well thought out or in reflection right now, as you discuss it, was this something that, you know, one piece came together after another? Did, did you have a plan? You're saying, listen, it's COVID. I'm going to get my life back together. Or did you just put one foot in front of the other? No, I mean, getting myself better is better than watching TV and getting more stressed out. Very so nice. it was just one thing at a time. One thing builds up on another. Yeah. Yeah, no, you said it right there, watching, you know, putting energy into yourself is better than putting energy into the, the idiot box, right? Right. So, yeah, 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 I definitely get that. And so many people need to hear that right now. Because like I said, the bad habits are kind of ingrained, you know, it's been a year. And so, um, and, and you know, people have lost a lot, you know, people have lost family, they've yeah. lost businesses. Um, how did you, when, what resources did you utilize to be able, so we talked about your friends and doing the GoFundMe, um, what other resources did you use to get back on your feet? Well, you know, we were doing the online sales, which was new, mm -hmm. and we got a lot of support from my customers and clients. Mm -hmm. You know, they pretty much said, what do you need us to do? You cannot close. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I have a lot of people that believe in me. Yes. And, yeah. You know, what I do. And, and I mean, mainly it was the support from the clients and customers. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the stimulus checks helped. I dumped mm -hmm. those all in the business to keep the lights on. Yeah. And, you know, unfortunately... I didn't qualify for any grants or loans. Mm -hmm. So I, I had to be creative. You know, I start doing like little side jobs. I started going to people's homes and doing Reiki and foot detoxes and, you know, anything I could think of to keep going. So that, I mean, and you say it kind of nonchalant, but you have a spirit within you, Sharon. Everyone doesn't have what you have. So I, that's what I'm really trying to, I don't know if you know that, but you don't, everyone doesn't have that spirit to kind of pivot right in, in the midst of things and keep that momentum going. And, and you really exemplify that. Okay. Um, where, so in your life though, being, this isn't the first time you've had to be resilient, right? This yeah, is the first time you've had, that you've had hardship. Um, tell us a little bit about Sharon and how you've had to be resilient before, because once we have those experiences, if we connect, we can pull up that same energy to then confront a new problem. And so how have you had to be resilient in the past? Uh, well, it's been a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was like, really like pick one, right? So yeah, I hear you. Uh, well, uh, um, the first one that popped in my head is, uh, you know, at a young age, I did not have the best home life. I was uh, homeless at 17. 
So you have to be very creative <laughs> on, you know, where you shower, where, how are you going to get food and, and all that. And, you know, I overcame that and I've lost a child, you know, that was tough. My husband died three years ago, mm-hmm. you know, that, and, you know, my little brother committed suicide. So, you know, I've had a lot of trauma in my life. That's just only a few. Um, yes, 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 it's yes. Each trauma that you go through, it like, it builds your skills more. Right. You know, so, it, you know, everything that I've been through, I have been able to turn it around and help other people going through the same thing. Mm-hmm. And that's what makes me a healer. Yes. You know, most healers have not had the easiest life. You know, they struggle with addictions and abuse and, and all that. And they overcome it. And we just pass our knowledge and our hearts to other people that, because mm-hmm. we know how it hurts. Yeah. <laughs> Like you take the lessons and then you pass along that love to somebody else so that, that hopefully they can do better. And, and, and like you said, and help them with their healing as well. And that's a gift. That's truly a gift. So absolutely. Um, So what advice would you have for other holistic businesses through this whole COVID and, and the pandemic? And what, what would you say to them? People that are struggling? Uh, Think outside the box, you know, look at other places similar to yours and see what they're doing to see if you get some ideas, you know, you don't have to copy them, but sometimes when you see a new idea, it will spark something in you. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, hey, you know, I like that idea, but I think this will work better in my business and give it a try. Mm -hmm. You know, if you fail, no biggie, that's more experience, that's more strength you know, under your belt to try something else. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Very good, Sharon. Like I, I you know, I always adore you. And so um, um, be, people being able to keep going. I mean, and no, like we're, we're, Americans are strong people. We always seem to keep going, right? But a lot of times people do lose hope and you're definitely a symbol of keeping hope going and, and reinventing and being resilient overall. Right. It's not always like that. You know, I did lose hope. I was trying to figure out how I can close and not have to go bankrupt. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there has been moments I wanted to give up, but I know I'm called to help others. So I pretty much hit my knees. I'm like, this is what I'm called to do. Help, help me out. Right. <laughs> so what I need to do. I'll right. do it. Yeah, absolutely. So you were talking about how CBD helps. And so I always like to kind of tie that in. Um, CBD definitely helped with your sleep, your anxiety, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. And so if we're talking about if the tool is resilience, CBD and cannabis can come in and help cbd is great for helping gain some clarity right for people that are kind of foggy and all over the place um they can help with the anxiety can help with the sleep thc can come in and sometimes kind of boost some of that creativity at times for people as well and just kind of decrease some of that overall negative talk that's going on in our head and so it can boost that resilience in, in our body and mind to kind of hit the next step and keep going. So absolutely. Um, so the next thing I'd like to do is just, I, I want to talk just to get a little bit deeper and about the stimulus checks. So kind of picking your brain. Um, gosh, they were sent out to a lot of people. And um, I know people that used it to buy new chairs for their deck. And I know they were sent out to big corporations yeah. and sent out to people that really needed them and to help in, in your case, keep their business going, right? So what are your thoughts on how this resource was distributed and how things could have been done better? Well, I believe if you were making a paycheck 
and still able to support your family. You know, we didn't have to send stimulus checks out to everybody. Mm -hmm. so definitely to people that, you know, like me, I have no income. You know, I didn't know how I was going to pay my rent or my mortgage or buy food. I started going to food pantries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you do what you got to do. But there's people that are blessed that didn't really need it. And they, you know, bought toys. And there are people, you know, $1,200 is not going to take care of a young family with four to six kids. Mm -hmm. You know, say they lost their jobs. They they need that money more than somebody that's blessed enough to still be working. Absolutely. And so how do you think it could have been distributed better? Oh, you know, definitely more to the, the um, lower income yeah. families and less to the ones that, you know, are well off. Right. Right. If you, if you were still working and, did you need the check basically right yeah, right do, do you really need it do you, do we really need to go in more debt as a country mm -hmm. for people that really didn't need it yeah yeah no i definitely get that so um my not my last question i have other questions <laughs> but what is the misconception of your business or you think of holistic businesses in general? Well, the funniest one I get quite often is it's, is it witchcraft? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. no yeah. herbs are, they did herbal medicine until the twenties. That's when pharmaceutical medicines start coming out in the twenties. So that's, you know, we've gotten so far off the path from natural remedies that it's almost a taboo. Yeah, it's strange because the our pharmacies were compound pharmacies and they were pulling together all of these different things. This was before synthetics were, you know, um, had been invented or, or easily accessible. And when you went to your pharmacy, the prescript, the, with a prescription, the pharmacist was concocting different medicines that were very natural and holistic. Yeah. And a great deal of those involved cannabis as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, yeah, we, we've, we've come, we've, we've gone down a long road. And do you think the way that medical cannabis, CBD, is available now do you foresee there being a shift i believe we're going to do a full circle mm -hmm. I, I believe more and more people are waking up to you know how the synthetics are affecting us and how the natural remedies are affecting us and you know because our bodies are meant for nature for mm -hmm. herbs and oil you know cannabis and mm -hmm. You know, I went off of all of my pain meds once I got my medical marijuana card. Yes. You know, because nothing is as hard as being in pain all day long, every day, it wears on you. Mm -hmm. And having that pain manageable helps you to be more creative in other areas because your mind's clear. Right. But I do believe that more and more people are going towards the, I like how they call it alternative. <laughs> it's really not alter, alternative uh, medicine. The original medicine, right? Yes. Not the alternative medicine, the original medicine. Yes. Yeah. And yes, it is complementary. You know, I still believe in modern day medicine. There's times it's absolutely needed. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's not about, it, you don't have to choose a side, right? right? I think it's a mistake that we make about a lot of things that um, you can be pro-pharmaceutical and you can be pro-original medicine. Um, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Um, it's just that you're accepting of both and they each have their place. Right, right. And you need to find what works for you. Yes. You I know, a lot of trial and error with both. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, I agree. Yeah. And, and some guidance doesn't hurt. So the more that we can make original, I love the original medicine thing. Um, the more that we can make that more mainstream, the more support options will be available so that people can get good guidance. Because I think that's part of the issue is that people need guidance and they need to be able to um, know what works, what doesn't work, and, and not just what worked for your neighbor. And so it may or may not work for you, but someone that has a general knowledge of some of these original medicines and can advise you based on the research that they're aware of, the research they've done themselves, and the multitude of patients that they've been working with and not just one person, right? right. And so um, the more we can, and, and those options are out there, don't get me wrong, but the more mainstream it is, the more options we'll have. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. And I love to share information. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Somebody comes and asks me about a health issue. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. So I want to talk a little bit more about Luminous Life, which I love. And um, I have one of your products here with me. I'm going to share the screen so that we can take a look at some slides and information here. And we'll get up to the top if I can. There we go. So let's open this up and then let's talk about a little bit more about Luminous Life. Okay. So tell us about your website, where you're located, give us a spiel. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to be updating the logo too. I'm just. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm just giving the whole business an overhaul because okay. it's ever evolving. It never stays the same. Yes, that's true. <laughs> That's true. If you're an entrepreneur, you need to know that, right? That you're yes. always evolving. Right. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Never, never, never stay stagnant. That's mm -hmm. when you lose. Yes. But, um, yep. Holisticcommunities.com is our website. You can, uh, see information, uh, the, shop from the store, which not, not everything's on the store. So mm -hmm. if you're looking for something, give me a call at the phone number 330-548-1434 uh, or email me at luminouslife11 at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. But my phone is with me all the time. You have any questions, please feel free to call. And we are located on Front Street in Cago Falls. We are on the front street that's going towards Silver Lake in Kent. We're not in the new fancy one, but we're in the, <laughs> we're in the big blue house with a bright yes. yellow door. Yeah, very, very nice. Absolutely. So tell us so um, tell us about a little bit of that transformation that you went from um, you always had Reiki. Like tell us about your services and what you've added and 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 how you've grown. Okay. Well, I still offer Reiki mm -hmm. and I offer a special for people that have always been curious about Reiki. Mm -hmm. don't want to invest all that money. Uh, I have a half an hour treatment for $20 mm -hmm. and I do a lot of ionic foot detoxes and I make it affordable $20 for half an hour. So people can come in and do it more often you know, because I see a whole lot of benefits mm -hmm. from people, you know, swelling, edema, you know, fibromyalgia. It's amazing the difference. And I think you really, because there are part, the whole, one of the points of the show is to really introduce different holistic practices to people that may have never won or knew a lot about it before. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you kind of offer these many treatments um, for people that are just kind of getting their feet wet, literally, um, is a nice way to approach this. And she has a beautiful location in Cuyahoga Falls. So definitely check her out. And if you're, if you're new to all this, then give it a try, right? Oh, yes. Absolutely. And so, um, so this is you. And tell us about your social media. Um, you mentioned the website before, holisticcommunities.com. Uh, tell us about your other social media. Uh, I, Facebook is my biggest platform. Mm 
Uh And I, you know, I put all the events up there. Uh, You know, I, I totally support other women entrepreneurs. So I'll share Mm -hmm. their events and uh, Instagram. I'm trying to get (laughs) Instagram. Yeah. (laughs) Older. Um, (laughs) But we did, uh, update the Facebook and the Instagram as we evolve. I, you know, we do changes on that. Yes. I just think it's funny because in my mind, I don't think we need multiple social medias. It seems to me that one would be enough, but yet I've been proven wrong over and over and over again. So yeah. What are you going to do? Just go with the flow. Go with the flow. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. And tell us about your new venture with the app. Yay, we have our own app. Yes. Uh, You can download it uh, through Google or um, Apple. Mm -hmm. And, uh, or you can just scan it. You could probably snap a picture of this screen and scan the code. But, you know, any questions you have about the company that's on there. Uh, you know, about us, you can book a service, you can shop, and it, it will take you straight to um, the website for, you know, events, and, which I need to update. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. And this is something you did during, you know, when you were shut down. Yes. Another way that you utilized your time and, and uh, kept things moving. Yes. And so a little bit about Green Harvest Health, um, we have three locations and uh, our main location is in Pickerington, Ohio, outside of Columbus. Um, we have a West Side satellite office as well as a Cleveland office as well. And we are on Facebook and Instagram as, you know, trying to do the same things. Um, But you can always uh, contact us at our website, which is Green Harvest Health, and email us as well or give us a call. So, Oh, I'm going to be starting up TikTok next. I I will, you go and I'll be right behind you. We, (laughs) We got an account, but, and I've been on there, I have not made the plunge yet. So, so I support you in your endeavor. I'll be right behind you on that one. <laughs> Absolutely. And so um, we do have a deal. If you're watching this and are interested in our CBD products, um, you get 35% off. So use the code GREEN35 um, when you are uh, purchasing our CBD on greenharvesthealthcbd.com. Or you can also come through our regular website and we'll get you there as well. And we do do medical cannabis cards, which is always seems to be a shock to people. I'm not quite sure. But um, we, if you're watching this, you can get your um, initial medical cannabis card at 190 and just reach out to us, give us a call or schedule online. And if you are a big fan of CBD, we have so many great options for for you now, whether you're purchasing our CBD um, as a customer or whether you would like to sell CBD, uh, we do have direct sales partners that do incredibly well selling our products. Um, We also have uh, affiliates where they get a percentage of their sales, much like a Mary Kay or what have you. And um, we have distributors, people that have been selling with us for a while, have their own clientele that they distribute product to and brand ambassadors. But if you wanna take it a step further, we also have white labeling. So if you would like to create your own brand with your name or logo on our products, uh, we will help you get to that dream as well, as well as custom product formulation. You have an idea and you just don't know how to get it done within CBD, Uh, we work with you to make your dream come true. So definitely send us an email and reach out. Fantastic. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. New venture, a lot of creativity. So it's a lot of fun. And tell us about some of your events you have coming up. Oh, uh, every month we started going back to uh, psychic fairs. You know, because psychic fairs are great for uh, 
it, letting people know we exist <laughs> for one. <laughs> and I've partnered with a mystic moon, a psychic and healing fair, you know, she helps me, I help her. Mm -hmm. And it's always a ton of fun. You know, there's so, so it's completely open now. Yeah. Is it, yes. Okay. So, so fantastic. Everybody has to wear a mask and sure. there's sanitizer everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But so. you, you know, you get to meet new people, see different. I always spend more money than I make at these things because <laughs> everybody does stuff different. Yeah. And so much cool stuff. Yeah. Very good. No, it's good to hear. And so they're at two different locations, right? So go ahead with that. Yeah, uh, March 7th. It's always on a Sunday, 11 to 5. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be at the Akron Turner Club. And then on the next Sunday, we will be in Kent at the American Legion. Very nice. And so the Akron Turner, so that's in Akron? Or is it in the Akron Turner Club? Is the Yeah, it is... Um, I can't think of the address right now. I it's okay. People can look it up. I just thought I'd throw that out there. I wanted some clarity with that, but they can look it up and make it there and have a good time, right? Yes. Absolutely. And then tell us about, this is at your location, correct? Yes. Yeah. Intro to Crystals. Um, we actually, we're going to have this a couple times in March and we already have the first class almost full and we're mm. starting on the second one. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you can't make March 11th, we also have it on Thursday, the 25th. Very good. And you can call me or uh, there's Eventbrite tickets that you can purchase. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll have people reach out for that, which is, it's a great thing to learn if you're looking for new tools. And tell us about the Reiki training. Yes, yeah, starting up Reiki training. We're starting with level one mm -hmm. and it's, uh, it's going to be uh, taught by Claire and I. We're both uh, Reiki masters mm -hmm. and we're seasoned. So. so two Reiki masters and from nine to six. And so yes. for people that want to become um, practitioners of Reiki, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, even if you only use it on your animals, it's so worth it. <clears throat> yeah. Very good. Very good. And um, as we were talking about CBD before, um, once a month, I do elevating your clients and patients with GHH, Green Harvest Health CBD, where you learn about doing our direct sales, learn about our uh, uh, white labeling, as well as custom product formulation and how you can get involved. So it's always conversational and a little bit of CBD education is mixed in there as well. So it's an opportunity to broaden your horizons. And like you said, keep reinventing yourself, right? Oh, absolutely. Yes. And, and Luminous Life is a, one of the locations that actually carries our CBD as well. I don't know why I haven't said that. No, but Anna, um, I, I think I use more of the products for myself. Yeah. I have a little bit of a problem with that as well. But you know what I didn't share, and I want to make sure people can see this. This is one of my favorite products that Sharon makes. And it is called the Drama Blaster Bad Vibes Eraser Spray. And tell them a little bit about what's in this. I absolutely love this. Oh, it's, it has sage and lavender in it. And say you work in an office and you want to get rid of everybody's yucky energy. Or your family. Yeah, or your family. Yeah, uh, definitely family. Um, sure. <laughs> I chase my girls around when, they, when they're misbehaving and not listening and I, or arguing. I, I start spraying this and I say it's the drama blaster and that gets everybody going. So... Yeah, and if it doesn't work, you can just spray them in the eyes. They'll get them. <laughs> That's, you know, one way or the other, you're going to get things under control, right? Yep. It's so. just like saging. Instead of the smoke sage, you mm -hmm. can spray. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I love that. It is a great way to also get rid of smoke, um, the smell of smoke. So um, just kind of clearing up your room in general. So a great product and go and see Sharon and check out. She has amazing products that she makes herself. She's always... 
like you're you tend to be so humble about it but you have amazing products there oh, and um so people should come by and check you out and if you like today's discussion you can also take a look at this again on youtube um so definitely subscribe so that we can grow and create more of these this content for you to learn about your wellness toolkit and and how to reclaim your wellness and uh, I have some hearts and love, no questions tonight. So Sharon, I love catching up with you and being able to just, I, I miss you and spending time with you, so. I know, let's not make it so long in between. I know, I know. Well, now that things are opening up, let's definitely try to do a talk or have me come up there and, and uh, just be in your presence. You know, she, obviously she has great energy people. So um, it's always a blessing. Thank you, Bridget. Absolutely. It's great to see you. And everyone have a great night and reclaim your wellness. Yes. I felt like such a tard. Oh.